Hey, what's up, guys? It's a beautiful day out here on the river. And today I'm going to take a quick break from fishing and show you guys how I have my kayak set up. I'll start off by saying it's a Wilderness Systems Tarpon 120. And I've been paddling one of these for about four years now. I do a lot of fishing on small rivers like this. Uh, and the tarpon is really a great kayak for cutting through that current. I also like it's got a lot of storage. You've got a nice big oval hatch at the front. And then another round one here in front of the seat. And with the slide tracks rails at the front and the back ones. There's plenty of options for accessories. So let's take a look at some of the modifications I've done to mine. Um, we'll start up front here with the fish finder. We've got a Humminbird 386 CI DI. And I'm real happy with this fish finder so far. I picked this one up over the winter. It is one of their older models. I, I just really like the small size. It doesn't really get in the way of my feet or anything. And compared to the old 385 CI I've been using the last few years, the down imaging, it really does a great job of showing you what's on the bottom. And I made my own custom mounting bracket for that out of 3 8 inch ABS plastic. And the battery I power the fish finder with is right inside the front hatch. I've got this Outdoor Products waterproof box I picked up in the camping department at Walmart. These are really great boxes. They're about the perfect size for the fish finder batteries. So I've got a 12 volt 9 amp hour battery inside there. And the box, I actually glued it down inside the hull using marine goop so it doesn't move around at all. And the transducer is oh, about six inches behind the box. I also glued that down uh, using marine goop. So the down imaging works fine shooting through the hull. So keep my PFD in there. And one change they've made to these tarpons, at least compared to my old one, uh, it's got a new and improved seat. Um, I really like these seats. They got great back support. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's actually holes all over going through that foam inside there. So any water you get splashed down on the bottom part, it'll just drain right out. And if you get your shirt wet or anything, you still get some ventilation through the seat back. And then I added some of this silent traction pad here and in the side pockets where I keep my, my tools. One little cosmetic thing I've done, pretty much every screw on this kayak I've swapped out with these black oxide coated stainless steel screws. I just think they look a lot nicer than the, the shiny silver colored stainless steel ones that came with it. And onto the crate. To hold the crate down on both of the front corners I've added one of these little sections of bungee cord with a little hook on the end and those just hook right onto the pad eyes behind the seat and in the back corners I've cut these little notches here where the tank well bungee just slides right into and that's not going anywhere keep it from keep the crate from moving around at all and I've also added this divider inside of it so I can keep my one waterproof Plano box right at the very front. Try to limit myself to one box. Well, I do have one of these small guide boxes in here too. Uh, it's mostly for uh, spinner baits, buzz baits, any big odd shaped lures that would be tough to fit in the other one. And then I got this soft cooler bag I use for my plastics. Got a bunch of Kalen's grubs in there, uh, some tubes, got some yum dingers, and a pack of flukes. And this little guy here, this is just a little pull strap I made. There's a couple spots where I launch where sometimes I'll have to pull the kayak through about 100 yards of grass. So I'll just loop this right around that front handle. And then you don't have to be hunched over when you're pulling it. It takes a lot of the work out of it. And I also got some bug spray and some sunblock in there. Always good to have those. And I've got three rod holders I made out of black 
one and a quarter inch PVC pipe. And if you look from the side, you can kind of see they're angled back. That's mostly just to keep them out of view of that camera there. And on the back slide tracks rails, I've got them set up the same on both sides of the crate. I've got one of these anchor cleats at the front and then one of these uh, ram balls here. If I need more than the three spots for fishing rods, I've got a couple tube holders I can just clamp right onto those. Most days three, three spots is plenty. And then the mounting brackets I made myself out of that same 3 8 inch ABS plastic I used up there on the fish finder. And the net I use is a Fraybill rubber handled trout net. This is their model number 3672. It's really a great little kayak net. It came with the leash. I ended up popping the cap off and replacing it with a little bit thicker bungee. Sometimes I'll use it as kind of a makeshift drift sock and most of the times when I net a fish I'll just grab it out of there and drop the net in the water and deal with it later so I didn't want it to ever break off or anything. And we'll follow that up to here. I just added this little loop right at the front end. And then this little knob here. I also uh, machined that out of that same 3 8 inch ABS plastic. And there's already a screw going through there for the leg lifter strap. So I just popped the screw out, added that knob, and threw it back in there. And that just holds right onto the net there. And the anchor trolley. I've got this Harkin pulley I've installed just right behind the center handle. And then I got a nylon ring here I used to run my anchor line through. You can see there the the lines here, I've, I've sewn them together and then added some heat shrink tube over them to make them look nice and neat. And then on the back end, I used one of these Ronstan 20 millimeter pulleys. And I've just got some bungee loop through there. And that leads back to this little round piece I made out of HDPE plastic. And that just screws right in to another spot like this where there's a uh, recessed round spot there and a threaded insert in the middle. So the screw right, went right into that. I also added some 3M exterior mounting tape underneath there just to make it a little bit stronger connection. One difference between this setup and my old one, on my old one I also ran a front section of anchor trolley from the center handle here to the end of the front paddle keeper there. Uh, I never really used it though, so this time around I, I figured I'd skip that part. And moving on to the camera rigs. We'll start up here with the front one. I'm just going to slide that right off its base. Now both my GoPro rigs I supply external power to. So if you look at this front part of the base here, there's two copper pins kind of right along the edge of that front front side there. And those line up with the two spring-loaded copper pins I've got inside the uh, bottom of the uh, camera rig here. And the two silver-colored ones there, those are neodymium magnets. I've also got a couple more of them inside the plastic underneath this red gasket. And that way when, when I slide the camera rig in place it just helps to hold them together. And it pulls together on this rubber seal. It makes a nice uh, waterproof connection in there. And I power this one using the same battery as the fish finder. So I have a 5 to or a 12 to 5 volt converter uh, mounted just underneath this inside the hull. And the camera rig itself, I decided this time around I'd use carbon fiber tubes. Uh, I think it just looks a lot nicer. Plus it shaves a little weight compared to the aluminum ones. Most of the rest of the parts I made out of black HDPE plastic. Any of this textured stuff, like this plate here and then the shroud that goes around the front, those are made out of ABS. Um, it's a little harder plastic than the uh, HDPE so it doesn't get dinged up quite as easy. And then the shock mount for the Zoom H1. I used ABS pipe for that. And you can see on both sides, it's got the four screws. And those hold onto a pair of O-rings. 
And basically the, the Zoom H1 here, it's only being held on by those O-rings. So it kind of acts as a shock absorber. Um, any vibration from river current I get going through the hull or if I smack my rod down real hard, it kind of helps to reduce some of those noises. And I made this rotate. That way when I go to hit that power button, I can rotate it forward and just double check on the screen there to make sure it's recording. And these things aren't waterproof at all. So I took my vacuum sealer and I made these little pouches that just slide right over them. That way they're a little more water resistant at least. And then onto the camera platform, you can see the power cable leads into the bottom and it comes back out the top here. I got one of these mini USB plugs. And I had to put holes through both of the GoPro cases. So neither of them are completely waterproof anymore. Um, I've never had a problem with fish splashing water up in into that little hole or anything. So if I ever get caught out in a downpour, I, I just slide the camera rig right off the base and just pop it right inside the front hatch. So we'll slide that back on and move back to the crate camera rig. So to remove this one, I just unscrew this ring and it just pops right out. Uh, the ring here and then these other two pieces were all part of a ABS pipe union. So I had to make a few modifications. I had to grind out this piece on the inside for it to fit over the carbon fiber tube. I also added these notches and then these brass pins on the bottom part. That way the camera always goes into the same position. And I don't ever have to deal with getting my camera lined up in the morning. And it also ensures that the electrical connections inside, they're all lined up. If you look at the bottom of the camera pole, you got four little copper contacts there. And those line up um, inside the tube here on the receiving end. There's four little spring-loaded copper pins. That'll supply power to everything on the camera pole here. And the reason that there's four, two of them are for the five volts for the GoPro. And then I run a 3.7 volt signal up here to this power jack that I'll use to power my flashlight, which I'll show you in a second. So now we'll pop the camera pole back in place. And this back camera rig gets its own dedicated battery. I've got a 12 volt, 5 amp hour battery inside this little bit smaller size waterproof box inside the crate. And then that runs to a pair of voltage converters. You can see them on the side, just right behind the tube. I got a 5 volt and a 3.7 volt in there. And the flashlight I use is a Olight S10 baton. I've done a few modifications to this. I converted it to run off of external power, so I added kind of a false battery in there and then ran this power cord out the back with a little plug on the end. And I also added this white plastic disc in there to act as a beam diffuser. It just gives it a nice even flood beam. And I also glued this Lego piece onto the bottom there. If you look on top of the GoPro, it's also got one of those. So the light just snaps right on top of the GoPro. And I'll plug that plug into the power jack on the side of the camera platform. And most of the time I'm not using that flashlight. So the 3.7 volt converter inside the crate gets its own separate switch controlling its power supply. So I'll flip that switch on and we should have power going to the flashlight now. Just hit that button and there we go. Cycle onto high. It really doesn't look all that bright in daylight, but the flashlight is 400 lumens. So at night it's, it's pretty bright. It'll light up. That's about everything within 25, 30 feet of me. So it's a good little light for paddling around after dark. And I can also use it as a video light with a back GoPro there. And I also picked up a new paddle this year. This is the Bending Branches Angler Pro in their camo pattern. Really a great paddle. It's nice and light. It's got the carbon fiber shaft, so it's long days on the water, your arms don't get quite so tired. And it's got the ruler built in for measuring your fish. You've got inches on one side and centimeters on the other. 
I just really like that camo pattern on, on this thing. Well, I think that covers just about everything. Really, I couldn't be any happier with the setup. It's a great little kayak for hitting small rivers like this and chasing down some smallmouth. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And I'll see you next time.